and the cause of Owista, which is the greatest disease. I would like to talk about this. This is the disease. People say greed and, and money, and, and if you ask any Mohawks, that's a Mohawk word. That's what well, greed and money, that's what it means. No, it's a disease of the man. Our medicine men know it. When they came to attack us, they attacked our strength, our minds. That was our power. So what do, how do they do it? Through a wista, which a normal mind, in Mohawk language, we don't have no word for I, only we. We don't have a word for I. We don't even have a word for it. So what a wista is, the priority thought in your mind, right? The first thing that comes into your mind is me, right? This is what happened. It used to be that it was we, always we. But now, me, so how, does, how did that happen? Well, it's the same way if you read about John Perkins stuff, the corporatocracy. They go in and say, think about you and, and, don't, and your family. Don't worry about it. And here's the money. That's the cause of Oista, and the whole planet suffers from it now. We have to get back to the oneness. Really. I mean, the key, I think, everyone should need to have to ground with Mother Earth. Like, I spent 500 hours in that river in Hornings Mills. Wow, you wouldn't believe what happened. All of a sudden, the fish started to talk to me first. By the end of that 500 hours, the trees, everything. And they were all coming going, look, we can, one who can hear. They're all just waiting for us, honest. This is what I got from that. Yes. It's not about the me, it's about the we, unity. Yes. And look at the narcissism that we're inundated with, with text messages, and we lose the ability to actually have real conversations with people. And Facebook, it's all about the me. It's that selfishness quality, and we've got to get back to the we, you know? And yes, that's exactly what absolutely. we're talking about. You know, I always end all my stories, unity, strength, peace. You know, every story I end like that. Because the peacemaker, when it came, he, he taught us three things. He taught us the good message, that here on Earth, all living things have the same mother and the same father. Source energy of creation and the Earth. So we're all brothers and sisters. That's the good message. So once you understand that, it's easy to go on to the peace, which is the formula by which we get along sustainably forever in peace. That's the Guyana Red Koa, which is, you know, what everyone needs, and that's why we've been the keepers of the law of peace. Guyana Red Koa means council of the great peace. It is the formula for living sustainably forever, perpetually on earth in peace. With everything, all the animals, plant, all of it, you know, because we're all one. I mean, this is the truth. And you've seen what happened in Egypt when the people finally said, no, we're all one. When they put their minds together, you see the power? Unity, the power of the mind. We used to be able to talk through the mind. So in Nimrod, we were talking about it earlier, after he made his Tower of Babel, right? And then the Elohim, if you read the ancient Hebrew, Elohim, which means gods with an S. The ancient Hebrews talk about gods, not God, right? But anyways, the Elohim, they said, oh, now they know about their mind. They can do anything they want. We must confuse their language. I think that's exactly what they did right then. We used to talk through our minds, like the animals and everything else do. And I think that's how they confuse their language, really. I mean, it used to, like when I was sitting there and I had a little glimpse, if you will, a gift, a little glimpse. I was talking to the fish and the birds and a great blue heron. You guys ever see a blue heron in coming to your yard this big? and stand there and talk to you for an hour, that's what happened to me. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, it really did happen. And we talked. And then the next year he came back and brought his baby. Have you ever seen a little baby blue heron? Well, they're this big and pure blue, the most beautiful bird I've ever seen. And he brought his baby, he said, this is my baby, introduced, and his baby stayed with me the whole summer. Uh, I couldn't believe it. And they're all, a, mole, a fox, like they all came to talk to me. And I could hear them talk, look, we got one who could hear. They're just waiting for us to be able to listen again. Really. I'd like to ask you the connection when we were talking about the sky people and Avatar, because I think yeah. Avatar is a good kind of um, correlation to what's happening in the world right now with yeah. people rising up yeah. and also uh, with the native, I guess, is it the mythology or just the, uh, the stories from, uh, from the sky people, if you can elaborate on that? Well, you know, in the first sun, the first people that were here on Earth, the first ones that were dropped off, if you will, or created, as the creation story says, uh, they all talked about stories from the people in the sky world. Now, the, the stories that I remember from the sky world are pretty intense. Like, 
You know, when I, I read the Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita, you know, that uh, Indian epic thing, right? And I'm reading, I'm thinking, this is all Skyworld stories. I remember all this from the Skyworld story. But not all of it, but I mean, it's like they're talking about some Skyworld stuff, right? But the way is that I remember, the, the people in the, on the Skyworld were so advanced. So I'll tell you a little bit about our creation story, how it starts in the Skyworld. So this... The chief of the sky world, he's so smart. He, he's so smart that he knows what everyone's thinking. Always. This is how smart this guy is. So and everyone knows this. So he puts out a riddle to all the women in the sky world. He says, any woman who can answer this riddle will be my wife. So generations go by. Like hundreds of years, no one answers this riddle. Then this beautiful girl, you know, she's like 17, 18. She hears the riddle. She's got the answer like that. And everyone in the sky world's all like excited. They can't believe it. You know, the, the great leader, he's finally getting his wife, right? She, someone after hundreds of years and that's the riddle. And so, uh, so she gets caught up in all the hoopla and the excitement, right? But she, she's already in love with the man her own age, right? And, uh, but she goes along with it because her mom, everyone's so excited and she thinks it's her destiny. So, but she knows that she's in love with someone else. And she's already made love with this guy. She's already pregnant. And she knows that the great leader, he knows this stuff because he knows what everyone thinks. So she has to tell him. So she does. And so he says to the guy, he says, OK, you know what? You screwed up. She screwed up. So as they're passing by this world here, Earth, the sky world's passing by. She's getting kicked off and been put down to this world. So she, they have to trick her, as the story goes. She was so vain because she was so beautiful. She'd always be looking at herself in the pond, how beautiful she was. And so the trick was, when she's looking at herself, you push her into the pond, going to open the pond, she's going to fall right down onto this world, into the earth, right? And so that's how it started up there. And when she came down, then he sent the, he sent the, the, the guy who got her pregnant. He sent that guy down as a spirit entity here to tell all the animals and stuff, like there was fish and stuff, right? And uh, so he went down and he told the geese. He said he taught them how to fly in a V, as the story goes. She's going to fall from the sky, bring her down. Told the turtle to come up, let her sit on it, and the turtle did. So she came down, the geese put her onto the turtle's back. And there was other animals there. They were waiting for the people, as our creation story goes. And uh, so... He, the other animals, she needed one of them to get to the bottom to grab a piece of earth. So the only animal that could get it, they all tried and they all died before they got back up. But the otter, he got down and he come up and he handed her one piece of dirt from the bottom of the ocean. And then he died too. And she walked around with that one piece of dirt and walked around the turtle and just kept creating Turtle Island, North America. And she just kept going until she created North America. Now, what happened then, she had her baby daughter. So her and her daughter, they went around now and they did all the plants. When she came down, when she was getting tricked, she grabbed to grab onto something, ah, and it was a tobacco plant, which obviously fell right out of the ground. So she landed here with tobacco in her hand. That's why it's our most important medicine, no other reason. And it is the most spiritual of all the medicines. They've turned it into the biggest poison. They turned the law of peace into the law of war. That's how it works, right? Tobacco is the most important. Can you tell us about the difference of native tobacco and tobacco from these corporate? Like oh, natural, oh, well, it's all native tobacco. It's native to here. But the corporations, they, they're writing all those chemicals on those cigarettes and the percentages because they're putting it in. They know exactly. It's mainly in the paper. All right, Philip Morris, that, they have that slow-burning paper, worldwide patent. All those chemicals are in the paper that you're smoking. You know, none of that stuff so, is natural tobacco. That's right. To tobacco. My goodness. I mean, I grow tobacco every year. I use it for everything. I don't use it just for smoking. I mean, I abuse it when I smoke the cigarettes, like we all do, and I guess we've got to get back to the proper use. And I'm trying to, oh my goodness. Tobacco collects thoughts. That's what it does. And so when you hold the tobacco in your hand, and always when, when I pray or pray, I guess for lack of a better word, when I'm meditating spiritually, I hold my tobacco. And my thoughts will go into that tobacco because tobacco collects thoughts. That's what it does. Like, for example, if we were all doing a trying to get a, a one mind together, right? 
and we just do the Thanksgiving address, right? And we all have tobacco in our hand. That's what we'll do next time you guys come see me and we're outside at a fire, right? And then we'll say the Thanksgiving address and we'll say, now our minds are one after each thanks. And then at the end, we'll put our tobacco under fire. All our thoughts will be in there and that will go right to creation. That's, the, that's what tobacco does. It collects thoughts and sends it back to creation, to source energy. That's creation. It's not like one guy up there or anything like this. It's source energy. This is creation. That's why we say creation, not creator. Creation, source energy, right? And we got some big stuff kind of, I don't know if you guys have been following this pole shift stuff and everything. And well, I mean, the bright light, many times brighter than the sun, it's coming from the east. So, I've been thinking about that prophecy. I think I told you guys it, right? right? I've been thinking about it full time since I woke out of this coma. I've been living it. I've been literally living it. And so, a lot of water in that prophecy, you know? So, you know, I'm thinking, well, where's the water coming from? But the second sun's coming. The sky world's coming back. This is the end of the prophecy. Okay, so, the sky world is our binary twin. Uh, we're a binary star system. They have, NASA admitted last year that 90% of the stars are binary. But they didn't say, but so are we, because we are. And our binary twin is the sky world, and in our case, we started there. Then we came here. So this, we know the truth. I mean, in, in King Solomon's temple, where the Templars dug for, since 1095, and they looted everything. They got everything, the Ark of the Covenant, all of it. They got everything. And then Da Vinci Code come up, you know, they always try to make lies. Half-truth propaganda, right? Oh, they, they found the Jesus blood. No, they found the original creation story and the map to America. That's why they got this outlawed and why they came to America. And they were the Merovingians, the 13th bloodline of the Illuminati. That's who was the main people behind the Templar organization. So the Merovingians, I mean, they came here. And then in the 1400s, that's 1308, say, because they had the original story of America, M-E-R-I-C-A. That's how it was wrote in Samaria. The original creation story of America, the place where we were created, the star in the West. They got the maps. But you think the monarchies and the Vatican wanted the people to figure this out? Ah, I don't think so. Pirates of the Caribbean, the Templars. Is that esoteric knowledge? Well, yeah. No, no, when, when their whole thing is built on lies, right? It's all lies. They're all of it. All lies. Hierarchy? That's a lie. The first lie, right there. First sinner is Nimrod. He invented the hierarchy thing. There you go. There's the original sin. Hierarchy. Right. So if you tarp going on about this truth and reconciliation. Real simple to me. Okay, if you want to get to the truth, you gotta identify the first lie, because everything else after it's a lie. So keep going back. No, keep going back. Past 1924. Keep going back. Past the American Revolution, keep going back, past the Templar, right back to Nimrod, 5,700 years ago. The original sin, hierarchy. That's the original sin. So let's start there and build truth from there. We're all one. That's the truth. Let's get back to it. And like the people of Egypt, it shows you the power of the unity of the mind. You guys heard of the Time Walker? You guys know about this? It rings a bell at the name. Well, that's a, it, it's an ancient almost um, mythical type thing, the time walker, right? But I am one, I know it. And I've been able to do that, I've been having so many of these things lately, time, like where I go back and forward in time. It's been happening a lot lately. I mean, the first time it happened when I was only 12, and it was amazing. I just get home from school and uh, I have been my first headache I ever had in my life. I was, and I tell my mom, I says, my God, I don't know. So she gives me an aspirin, right? She tells me to lay down on the couch. And I can't believe this pain. It's like, whoa, I mean, this, I never had anything. I've never had a worse headache to the state. It was my first one. And so they asked for nothing to work. And they're having dinner. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm of a family of eight brothers and sisters I have, right? So they're all eating dinner. I can't even eat dinner because of this headache. So I start thinking, I can tell this pain to get out of my head. This is what I'm thinking, right? So I can concentrate on it, I can feel it's right here. So I'm telling you, I'm on it, I'm telling you, get out of my head. I've got it surrounded in my mind. I've got to, and I'm telling it to get out of my head. It's my head, you have to get out. I'm screaming at this pain. As soon as I get to that one thought mode, 
boom, it's like my eyes go straight through the ceiling, right away, and I look down, I'm looking at the top of my house from above it, right? I'm laid on this couch doing this, right? Then I go up to the next street, and I come down and I see my brother talking there, Donnie Stewart, David Lafferty, and Danny Lane, the new kid who just moved in. And so I'm down, I got my ears too. David Lafferty, or Donnie Stewart says to my brother Donnie, oh, Danny's a new kid, and he, we told him that Dougie's a tough guy of our age, and he wants to fight Dougie. He's like this much bigger than me, right? A big hockey player kid, right? So uh, David Lafferty says to Donnie, well, just go tell Dougie that Danny wants to fight him, and we'll set up a fight. And uh, Donnie goes, oh, Dougie, I'll kick your ass, Danny. And he comes running down. Now I move up, like I'm watching him run. As he's running down, he, he comes running down the stairways, trips on a can, falls onto the road, cuts his leg, and then he gets up and runs back in, and he runs right into the house. And I, I was watching, I come down, and I'm in the door, and he, and he opens the door, and he goes, Ducky, Ducky, Danny Lane wants to fight you. So I'm like this on the couch, I open my eyes, I go, what was that? I stand up, I go right to the door where I just was, it opens exactly like i just seen, he says, Ducky, Ducky, I said, Danny Lane wants to fight me? He goes, how did you know? I said, well, you just talking, and I said the whole conversation, he says, how did you know? Like, I'm trying to trick him, I said, I, don't, I was just there. Wow. Anyways, that happened to me then, the first time, this time walking thing. I went back, forward, and then back at the same time. Now this has really been starting to happen to me a lot lately. And uh, I understand now about the power of, of thought and of the mind. There, here's the true power we all have. All of us can travel. All of us, not just me. We can all do this. Travel through time and space with thought. There, we can go to the universe. I'm serious. Just with our thought is the power. Do you know what I find interesting? The Tower of Babel, and you were mentioning Samarius, yeah. and uh, the Babylon uh, Empire, which is mentioned in the Bible, which uh, talks about the woman who sits upon the waters. She has seven heads and ten horns, plus there's one beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you were mentioning about the obelisk in Washington and all these esoteric yeah, symbols, yeah. From, and they got Freemasonry signs on them. Yeah. If you can elaborate on that and uh, what you think about that. Washington? Washington. Yeah. Well, they say it represents Washington. No, it represents Nimrod. That's right. Because America is New Babylon, that's you know? Right. And that's what Korean Samaritanus is, the Statue of Liberty at Washington. So at New York and Washington, welcome to Babylon, you know, in New World Order. British Empire, American Empire, same empire, same people. It's like the Templars. They have to go to Jerusalem every thousand years. I don't know if you've heard about this. No, I, I use the temple because that's what they called themselves last time. But first time Jesus sa sees the money changers in the temple turn it into a den of thieves and he exposes the whole debt scam. The same debt scam they're running on us now. He exposes it then. Five days later, he's hanging on the cross. Right, that's right. So then, you know, Rome sacks Jerusalem, da da da, like in uh, 70 AD or something. And, you know, away they go again. And then they come back again, a thousand years later, 1095 for the first crusade. Same people, same money changing families, the bankers, right, the Templars. And then they come back a thousand years later, 1947 and create Israel. Same people, the money changing families that killed Jesus, killed Kennedy, they killed everyone. Killed Martin Hendrix, Martin Luther King. killed Bon Scott. I'm telling you, I've been studying all this stuff. Secret Covenant, you guys heard of the Secret Covenant? Have you heard of the Secret Covenant? Okay, he phoned me. I want to read it over the radio. Mm -hmm. My goodness, when I got this, it was nine years ago. One of my readers, I have a lot of readers on my stuff, sends me back this thing saying, you've got to check this out, the Secret Covenant. I start reading it. I read this whole thing. This is the constitution of the bloodline. And so I read the whole thing. I phoned the girl. You know, I said, where did you get this? She says, one of her bloodline contacts found it in her grandfather's attic. The, and, and, you know, thought she better get it out. And I said, is she still alive? She says, yeah, so far. And I said, oh my God, let's get it out. So I've got it out there on the net. Well, it starts off, an illusion it will be so grand that those who see it will be thought of as insane. That's how it starts, right? And then what the bloodline who are going to be ruling us, how they're going to control us through mind control throughout history. This, yeah, and talking about how through all their pyramidal control grid, Freemasonry, all that. It's just pyramid power, that's all. You know, 
Didn't it get outlawed here? Remember that in the 70s or 80s or so? You know, it's funny you got America and then on the back of the dollar bill you get an Egyptian pyramid. But do you know what that logo is? I studied that, right? Where did that logo, that all, all seeing eye pyramid? Came from the Freemasons. No, no, no. no. I studied it. 1754, all right, this is how the 33rd degree came into being. Adam Weishaupt, he started a private coven for Nathan Rothschild called the Bavarian Illuminati. Their corporate logo was the Pyramid with the All-Seeing Eye, 1754. Check it out, it's all in the historical record. That's their corporate logo. They put it on the dollar bill saying, and in there on the bottom it says, our vent, I knew it quipped this, our venture is a success. And on the bottom it says, Novus Ordus Seclorum. And on the pyramid it says, 1776. What happened for the Bavarian Illuminati in 1776? America. Nope. That is when the 33rd degree was imposed upon Freemasonry. It always was only 32 degrees. Till 1776, the 33rd degree is the Bavarian Illuminati placed over top. They are the all seeing eye. They're the gatekeepers, the they're the matrix. Ones. That's right, the elite. Right. That's right, the shining. And it used to go back to Egypt where you'd have the eclipse. Which was the all seeing eye, the moon and the sun coming together. And that's why they used to have power over those people. Uh, in Egyptian, in those days, because they, they would they would know the calendar and they would used to prophesy when the full moon would happen. Yeah. And they used to say the snake was going to eat the sun, and yeah. everybody would bow down and believe that they had that they had no power. All, mind control, right? all yeah. through history. All control. I like to see you guys. And thinking, there's a couple guys starting to use their minds. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I came down to meet you guys. You know. Yes. And I'd like to do another. Uh, uh, talk on your radio thing, you know? Yeah. I'd like to talk about the secret covenant. Everyone needs to hear this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. So grand will the illusion of freedom be, they will not even know they are our slaves. Ah. So grand. The American, the banks, the Wall Street, all of it. All of it. So, uh, you know, we will set up, they talk about everything in here. They also talk about their greatest fear, which is the 33rd degree Freemasons. Finding out that everything that they've been telling them is a lie. This is their greatest fear and their greatest weakness. I phoned up a friend of mine. He was my best man, my best friend growing up. And uh, he joined the Freemasons when he was like 17 or something. And I remember he had a brown meteor and he pulled up to the courts where we grew up and around the circle him and I were talking. He was talking about his first ritual. What are you getting into? He says, well, you know, he's going on about it. Well, you know, I said, sounds like a cult, like a devil worshiping cult. Well, you know, blah, 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 my dad was in it. He's going on like this, right? That was 1977. So I phoned him up just before I did that story about Rob Ford. And coming from that middle class Etobicoke house to, to the Ford mansion, like that, right? That's how it happened, I remember. And uh, so he says to me, well, he says, you know, you should really be looking at Flaherty, Doug. I said, oh, I am looking at him, Brian. He says, they invited me to join the 33rd degree. I said, they invited you to join the 33rd degree, Brian. I said, so how does it make you feel? I told you when you were 17, you, you know, they're probably devil worshippers. How does it feel being with the devil worshippers, Brian? He says, well, at least they're running everything. And I'm thinking, so I read him the secret covenant, the whole thing, over the phone. I said, here, here's the part about you guys. You guys are, are their greatest fear. Make it happen. It's all lies. There's no secret anything. The only secret is it's all lies. You know, so I, I, you know, is he going to take it apart? I hope. You know, but he's one of them now. This guy was my best man. I wasn't his because he joined the Freemasons. The only reason he was my best man is because I guess we were 12 and he had trouble at home. You know, he had one older brother and I had four, three older brothers, but his older brother was, a bit, you know, punched him out and stuff like that. So one day he had a fight with him and he was crying and like, he was hurt, you know, like a friend is hurt, you, you know, you, you give him a shoulder, right? And then he told me, you know, after that, you know, we, he, he says, let's be each other's best man. Now, right away, I think, oh, that's heavy shit, right? So I told him, okay, you know, I'll agree to that, right? I was only 12 or 13. And then, uh, well, we grew apart. I mean, when I got married, I mean, I had my, I was on the road in a rock band. I had my rock band as my, as my ushers. But he was my best man because of that deal. So I'm a man of my word. I mean, this is all you are. When you die, they will only remember your words. So make sure 
you you know what you're saying because people are going to hold you to them right but anyways I don't know I mean where we're up against it's like Kennedy said a ruthless conspiracy in all areas of everything and it's like the matrix where you're sitting there talking to someone and they could turn into an agent at any time right could happen like that too right in this real matrix we're living in so the best thing I could say is all right everyone should have to ground ground get down and clean the earth right around your house no no not your yard and rake it get into the river and in with everything else that's living and help. Just do that and they will come to you and you'll start to hear what I heard. All of us are the same. We're one. We're brilliant. We have our, I don't know if you guys know too much about the pineal gland. You know about this? You know how the Pope always has that staff with a pine cone on it behind him? That's to represent the pineal gland. This is where your brilliance lies. You know where it is? Right here, down about that far, shaped like a pine cone, your pineal gland, your third eye. This is where your brilliance lies. When I do my prayer, I don't go like this, but I, I do. I, I take my thoughts, say start here, right? And I visualize it going right into my pineal gland, my thoughts, my words, boom. And when I'm there, always I'm in pure light. And that's where I do my prayer from. Right there, I'm speaking directly with creation. All of us have this antenna right in us. Fluoride in the water puts calcium on your pineal gland. That's how it dummies you down. That's how it dummies you down. Sandalwood oil will help to take, decalcify your pineal gland. You know, I've done a little test for the last couple of weeks where I stopped drinking tap water and I feel so much more better oh, you will. and more clear. Try it for like a week, try it for like two weeks. And uh, just just drink the water. Um, Change your toothpaste. Yeah, <laughs> and, like no fluoride in the water. That's what they're, what they're pushing for. They got it done in Calgary. And they could do that there. First Kitchener, then Calgary. But what it does is it coats your pineal gland with fluor with calcium, which makes you stupid. And Hitler noticed from '34 when he started it in the in the first concentration camps, fluoridating the water. It made them docile and stupid because it puts a calcium coating over the pineal gland. That's what it does. It's pure poison. Hopefully the Rob will do something. I don't know. Rob. Do you what want it, to talk about that story? You think I should? When he came down in the summer? Well, I would like to put on the video, if we're going to put it on YouTube, that Rob's yeah. going to be just talking to the general. I've got nothing more to say to him. I've had it with him. I've had it with him. He doesn't He's follow the law. I don't want to talk to him. He's full of shit. That's what I say. Here's a sound bite for you. You know? <laughs> Cowboys and Indians. Let's go, Robbie. Let's do it. <laughs> so I guess the w one thing I was wondering is when you were mentioning about the uh, time um, time walker time walker. Um, did you uh, was there anything like did you have one of those experiences before the interview? Because I still remember when I interviewed you here on CKLN. I remember right before I said I was going to put you on hold, and I remember right before I think you said. Something like, I'm really glad you're able to broadcast, or I'm really glad the show is able to go on. And then they announced that the whole station is going to be shut down, whatever, they're going to revoke the license. Uh, and it hasn't shut down, which I'm glad. Um, but they're still, you know, the order is still to revoke the license at CKLN. And we're just around the corner from it right now. Yeah, wh wh what's your impression, I guess, of the, the whole CKLN? Well, I just read a book called Rise of the Fourth Reich by Jim Mars, and the Operation Paperclip. I mean, 900 of these top Nazis came in top posts in Canada. Read Rise of the Fourth Reich. 900 of them showed up here, Nazi war criminals, and they're running everything in these bureaucratic places, the way the bloodline does it, because that's who's really running America and Canada. You don't have no democracy. I sent Harper, when he, when he won that election, I sent him an email. I said, congratulations, Mr. Harper, on, on winning your dream job, the leader of a pretend democracy. I said, you can consider this my resignation from the Corporation of Canada. I take my real name, Tahoge, don't they? And uh, he never did respond to that. Actually, I've sent him a lot of emails. The only one I ever got a response was on the Poison Pine River. And, uh, you guys should read this story on my site. This is a good story. You send you an email back? Oh, no, no, no. I hit a nerve on this one. And I didn't know. I was just, the fish, I told you about the fish and everything, right? And then, uh, so I call up the uh, 
Ministry of Natural Resources, I said, we got a huge problem here. I said, I have constant leaching of phosphates into the river here in Ronnie's Mills. You know, he said, oh, you know, the guy on the phone, right? He'll send someone over. Three days go by, no one comes over. I phoned the guy back. I said, yeah. oh, we sent a guy over. I said, no, you didn't. Yes, we did. I said, I'm telling you, no one came. He says, well, he said there's a little bit of foam in the river, no problem. I said, what? I said, it's constantly. I've been here now for six months. It has never stopped. I said, I've walked up to North Pine. I've walked up to South Pine. It comes from the pond in Hornings Mills. That's where it comes from. And uh, so he didn't do anything. So I wrote the story of Poison Pine River, put it out there to all the politicians, all the media, all this, right, on Mohawk Nation News. First time I ever get a response from Harper like that and the Ministry of Fishery and Oceans and some other minister. I go, whoa, hit a nerve, did we, eh? Well, I start investigating that. Then I find some eyewitnesses that watched them building the pond. The army built the pond in 1945. And I've met four people now who watched it. And I met the girl who got put into the mansion there in 1946. Her father worked for the army and they got put in the mansion. This is the whole thing. The people in town don't know all this. They're told that it's the deepest natural pond in the world. That's why all the Navy divers always go there. The Navy sends divers over here to check on whatever it is they put there in the barrels that is leaching phosphates. So I had another guy come up, really good activist, sort of like us, right? And uh, he's a smart guy, scientist, so he took samples. First he brought his guy down to see if it was radioactive, it wasn't. So he told me it's biological, it's biological weaponry. And uh, so that's what they've been poisoning us for 45 years. Now I see what it does to the fish, oh my God. And all the people in Hornings Mills, it's like high, high incidence of diabetes and they all think it's normal. They're all on an insulin. Oh, no, 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 that's from POP, Persistent Organic Pollutant. And uh, anyways, it's just sick what's going on. And uh, Harper said he was going to do something about this. Never heard another thing about that. It was just, shut up, we don't know. That's another one of our dirty little secrets. The filthy little secret. Biological poison to the people of Ontario constantly. You know, the secret covenant, you guys got to read that. Ooh, when they, they control everything. So they say, when they come to us for help, we shall give them poison, which will cause other diseases, which will create more poisons for them. This is what their whole health thing is, right? Right? They control everything. Everything. Pyramidal control, everything. How, how about the uh, Highland group? Did you want to mention them? I know you mentioned them, but do you want to talk about... Who are they? Yeah. Yeah, everyone should be talking about this. What I will guess, okay, knowing what I know about my esoteric studies of, of all these secret societies and all that, every finance minister in the whole corporate world, I will say, in every corporate country, which is all the members of the United Nations, all corporate countries, every finance minister is a 33rd degree Freemason. This is how they guarantee the world economic money thing. Right. So I would suggest that in the Highland group, you're going to find every finance minister since John Turner, John Cretchen, there'll be many of them became finance ministers, but every finance minister is going to be a 33rd degree Freemason. So this whole Highland group, who are probably trying to kill me now, they probably already talked about it, I'm sure they have, but they'll be all talking to the British general, I can guarantee you that, because jurisdiction is being set as we speak in London. The generals will definitely accept their jurisdiction on a royal proclamation, like they did at the Balfour Declaration when they created Israel. So it's happening. And all I'm going to do is remove the mass of these criminals, and these are the guys that have been running your country, all right, for a long time. If you'd like to elaborate on the, um, just to change the topic there, uh, the residential schools where the government had to come on and apologize yeah. to the natives because a lot of these children were... Um, 58,000 murdered. 58,000 murdered. Well, we didn't get... 60% death rate in those schools. Uh, a school with a 60% death rate. As they were death camps. They were not schools. They were extermination camps. That's what they were. The and, and then Harper thinks he can come out and apologize. Well, what about 1948 crime and punishment and genocide that, you, that Canada signed? You know? Why don't, you know, you're supposed to follow it. If you don't, you're breaking the treaty that you signed, right? They don't follow it. They don't follow the 1961 Treaty on Decolonization. They don't follow that. They don't follow any of it. That's why they didn't get a security seat. They don't follow any of the rules. They're the only ones who don't. And they never will.
because then they will be exposed as the criminals that they are. You don't have a democracy. Democracy is not 51%, that's corporatism. So even if you did think you had a democracy because you got to put a vote in, it doesn't matter. Like Stalin said, it doesn't matter who wins the vote, it matters who's, who counts the vote. You know, hello. 51% is divide and conquer, ordo ab chao. They got democracy from Guyana and Red Goa. It has no split. We do not come until we become of one mind. That's the way it goes. And people say, we can't become, well, why not? Instead of saying we can't, get that thought out of your mind. It's like Oista, the first thought's me, right? Get that thought out of your mind and make it we. We put an issue here, let's say, let's do an example. So we put something right here, anything, that stain, right? So I'm looking at it from this perspective up here. And I describe to you guys what I see. Now Rob looks at it from over there. He's, he's seeing it different from me. And you look at it, and we all describe it, all right? But we all know we have to come of one mind, and we will agree that it's a stain on the floor, right? I mean, that's a simple, simple way to become of one mind. But I mean, we could put an issue like, uh, okay, the fluoride in the water right here. And you go on, you go on. We all go on. We talk about it. We know we have to come of one mind. We can't have no split on this. We will become of one mind on it, right? I mean, you hear everyone's point of view. This is it. Everyone has a say. This is how it works. If someone's left behind, you got a problem. If you got a guy in Brazil who can't feed his kids and he can't, you know, he's dying, right? They're all sick and dying. We have a problem. You know, oh, over here in Canada, we're all good. We're out of the cold. No, you know what? We have everyone on earth. Nobody left behind. I think the problem here in Canada is they like to divide people with religion. They like to divide people with politics, just Class. label left and right, classes. Monetize everything. Yes, and that's the thing that we need to get rid of. We need to say, hey, listen, we're all one. Yes. So let's just start thinking with a collective mind and let's be right. in unity and love and peace. Yes. And let's have a better world. Right. That's it, just wake people up. And let's live in, in, in harmony with all of our brothers and sisters, all the plants and animals. The animals yeah. and, this, yeah. you know, and the winds and all of it. And our cousins, the stars, we will be going to visit them again. There are cousins. Every one of these stars has, are, there are cousins. We want a better world. And we see the war and, and rebellions happening all over the world. It's, it's, right now, it's, it's, it's an awakening in the world. We see people wanting a better life, wanting more rights, wanting to be free and equal. No matter what, if it's religion, they want to get rid of all the tin pot dictators, these guys that steal billions of dollars from the people. Look at Mubarak, he stole over $90 billion. For how many years was he an American puppet? They supported him. 30. Yeah, 30 years. I mean, it's all coming to an end. The people are starting to wake up and use their minds. Onyekunra, use your mind, the thing that takes care of you. You know, start questioning everything. Everything. That's what Diana Red Court teaches. Question everything. Everything. We question everything. Use your mind. That's what it's for. Question everything. Believe nothing. Don't believe it because someone tells you something. No. Investigate it with your own mind. Then come to your conclusion. But I mean, once we start to use our minds properly, I mean, it's like using the tobacco properly. It's the same thing, right? Maybe, maybe it'll have something to do with the same thing, maybe. You know how they turned the Constitution of Peace into the Constitution of War through, order, through 51%, right? They call that democracy. That's not democracy. 51% is divide and conquer. But, you know, I hope that Egypt writes a constitution with, well, they're not going to have one mind in there. That's the way it's supposed to be if you go about quoting the guy in Red Goa. But they'll probably put 67%. That's more of a democracy, you know, than divide and conquer 51%. That's built in divide and conquer, always. Play off one side against the other. In the secret covenant, they say, we shall divide their governments. We shall own both sides, right? So you're just working for the shareholders of the corporatocracy. If you're voting for Harper or Ignati, they're just working for the shareholders. Their job is to continue the illusion of freedom to us. That's their job. The illusion, the illusion of freedom. That's all it is. The CEO comment. The oh, yeah. Do you see Harper on Mansbridge, one-on-one? Did you see it? No, I didn't see that. Whoa. What a goof. I just thought, I hope, you know, as I've said, <laughs> watching his face and his, he's what just got a... Was it a recent one? Yeah, it was like last 
week or something, Mansbridge 101 with Harper. And he's, just, and he's making these goofy laughs, and, you know, he's really a goof. I, I always used to say, he's lucky I didn't know him in high school. I would definitely punch him out in high school, right? And then I'm, I'm at, I'm at, I'm at uh, Rob Ford was going, uh, I did a thing, uh, we called the mayoral debut with Rob Ford. Me and Zeke, Zeke played his, uh, what is that box called? He has a box that he plays for, I can't remember, Sharon or something. And I played my acoustic. We were, we were called mayoral debut. And uh, so it was up near my high school, Scarlet Heights, where I went to high school. And uh, some guy's outside with me having a smoke, and he says, yeah, Harper went to that high school. I said, no, he didn't. He's lucky he didn't go there. I went there. <laughs> I said, I would have punched him out for sure. He said, and then someone else goes, someone else goes, he went to Richview. I said, he went to Richview? That's only like one mile away. Well, if he went to Richview, in 1978, he graduated the same year as I did. Anyways, Harper is an Etobicoke New World Order person. I mean, Etobicoke, uh, Canada's first planned community. They used to have a raid on the sign. But anyways, and, and Harper was part of that first planned community stuff. My goodness. And now he's Prime Minister. And got it. Mayor of Toronto and the Prime Minister of Canada all come from New World Order or Toby Co. Exactly. Hey, I heard someone said that Rob Ford and Doug Ford got on the newspaper or something and said, New World Order and laughed or something. Did you hear about that? I didn't hear that one. I heard the latest one I heard was uh, Doug Ford had gotten in the paper saying that, Ro saying that he thought that Rob Ford should get a veto, should get a veto power that anything that the council does, Rob Ford should be able to say yes or no to. And that then Rob Ford is quoted saying that uh, his brother is not his spokesperson and that he's 300 pounds of fun and you can find him. He's easy to find. That's what it was. It was like, I'm easy to find. I'm 300 pounds of fun. <laughs> you know what? I mean, it, it, the whole thing with Robbie, I mean, I've known Robbie since. I like Robbie. I mean, you know, but I mean, he's the youngest of, of the Ford family, right? To me, all right, so he has not walked on this earth. I've walked on this earth eight years more than him. That's a lot, okay? What, it, it, Plato, we got to remember what he said. He says, when you shy away from government, you're destined to be ruled by those of lesser intelligence than you. And it, yeah, how true is that? I mean, my goodness. I mean, I'm not trying to say Rob's stupid or anything like that. I'm, just saying, I've walked on this earth a lot more than him. I've taught him a lot of things, you know. He's watched me a lot, you know. He's learned some things from me for sure. I, I mean, as growing up, I'm not talking about right now. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, I mean, friends, when he, friends, okay, yeah. I just want to follow the law. I'm the only one following the law up where I am in Ganigoda. I'm the only one. Everyone else is trying to break it. They're all going to be talking to the general when they take their jurisdiction. People should be... And, you know, these guys investing all this money in these windmills up there? Wow, really stupid. I told you. Real stupid businessmen. And, you know, this quarry now with the Highland Group, right, you know? Stupid, stupid businessmen. But, hey, everything happens as it should. Their time is up. That's the good news. The hope then would be, with this British general, would be that they're following the law, I guess. Like, that's, that's the thing I'm nervous about, right, is if they're on the same side. Well, let's see. This is a, the Haldeman Proclamation, they call it. It's signed by Captain General. That rank is the highest rank in the history of the military. So you can bet your ass that every general knows about this, okay? And they will follow that order to the T. That's how they're trained. It's why the empire exists, because the generals follow to the T, right? When Mark Antony was one of Caesar's generals, when he didn't, then everything collapsed, right? You see? Right. It's not going to happen like that. They're going to follow the, I guarantee you. And so I guess the, the thing with the, with the proclamation is that the land that this Highland group thinks they own, they don't, really ha they don't really own it. No. No, I told them before they put up a windmill or bought a farm. You know, hello. You know, pretty stupid businessmen. And that's the people who were running your country. They're real stupid businessmen. <laughs> they really are. And when we remove the mass, and we will, I'll say it again, we're going to remove your mass, all of yous. I hope Rob's not on it. I hope he's not. 
Exactly. And the w one thing I wanted to ask about this, the wind turbines, because there has been some articles now, they're saying there's the moratoriums, the ones that are going to be the, you know, the thousands that are going to be putting in, in water on the coastlines aren't going to be done. Um, are, have you noticed that there's any, you know, slowing down with the wind uh, situation or? No, from where I am, they put up 180 of them. Now, a lot of people have been getting sick, okay? Well, you know why? I, you go near these things. Have you guys been near any of them? Wow. They're so big. It's like they break the magnetosphere. It's like they're so big. It's to do something like, it's something to do with the magnetosphere they're doing, something like that. And, uh, you know, the people are getting really sick up there that are like within 100 meters. They cannot, they've had to move. People are getting really sick. You know, and I've been, I'm living in Shelburne, so it's like the, right in the middle of them. They're, the closest one is like, you know, a mile away or something. But I, I haven't been able to sleep for two years. I'm thinking it's to do with that. It has to be, you know. And a lot of people are, so there's a lot of uh, public awareness and lots of dissidents going on the health effects. It hasn't been studied. Did you hear about the environment? The environment minister, Peter Kent? Did you hear the story? No. No, it was on uh, Strombo. He had a video up on the website, George Strombolopoulos. Uh, so basically, he's in bed with the oil companies because he's making public statements. This government and all Canadians and uh, our gas-emitting friends on the other side of this house <laughs> should be aware that, uh, that uh, Canadians are proud of, um, of the uh, Canadian oil sands as a natural resource that is well regulated and it is responsibly administered uh, in an in a, uh, environmentally sensitive and sustainable manner. He was bumped up to environment, sir. From yeah. what? Yeah. what was, from a broadcaster? Oh, from media. Ah. Yeah. Sounds like a little bit of the economic hitman thing there, you know? I mean, people got to read this book if you want to know how it really works. Confessions of an Economic Hitman by John Perkins. The corporatocracy, because that's what it is. You, no one has a democracy. No one. At 51%, there's no such thing. That's Ordo Ab Kale, divide and conquer. So. Do you want to uh, introduce yourself and say your website? Yeah. Dahoge Dote, Ganyongi Haga. Some people call us Mohawk, most people do, but we're really called Ganyongi Haga. People don't know that. They've even stripped us of our name. Guyana Rago turned the law of peace into the law of war. Don't even call them by their name, call them Mohawk. Mohawk is actually Algonquin for baby eater. That's what it means. So that's what they call us, baby eaters. But we're called Gunyangihaga. That means people of the Flint. We're the keepers of the Eastern Gate of the Confederacy, of the Iroquois Confederacy, as Champlain called us. Haudenosaunee, as we call ourselves in Seneca, or Rodenosaunee, as we call ourselves in Mohawk, which means people building a longhouse. We're the longhouse people. Anyways, that's who I am. And your website? My website yeah. is dahoge.de, which is spelled T-H-A-H-O-K-E-T-O-T-E-H -E -E dot W-S. That's my website. And I'm a writer now, so... Apparently, I write good stuff. People like my stuff. I don't know. I didn't realize I was a writer, but I guess I am. 220 stories later. <laughs> I don't even know how it started. I really don't. I guess, you know, I, I do remember. I thought, people should be writing about this, and no one writes about it. So I'm the only one who's writing about it. So that's how it started. And it came from your collective mind being an independent thinker, thinking right. outside the box. Right. Not letting people tell you what the news is, right. but going out and investigating yourself. And that's what we do here for CKLN um, with Daniel Libba with 88.1. I mean, we're on the streets. We're asking questions. We're out there. We've got people on the radio shows because it's, the, it's that independent media that we need more than ever. And that's why we need CKLN back on the radio permanently because this is about free speech. Yes, it is. And freedom. I mean, is there anything that we want more than that? All of us? Do we have anything more in common? Freedom. No, I want to rock and piss. Where's the bathroom? <laughs> Just around the corner. Just down the hall. Like, yeah, around that corner. Here, let's get him saying something, too, eh? What do you got? Uh, you're you're saying Hollywood. something, Bobby. You're He's got to get in and <laughs> say something. Right? You're the Hollywood. Get do him coming. Do you know about uh, Mohawk College? 
but about have it. you ever heard of this and do you know if like is there any mohawks involved with it or is it mohawk college is out near um milton or something right because i know it's just been in the news recently because they're not letting nor they didn't let norman finkelstein speak there last week if you know who he is no He's i the, don't uh, it's the Canadians for Peace in the Middle East group, I guess, that had him on a Canadian tour. And he was in Toronto, I guess, up at York University. And um, what happened at Mohawk College was they apparently had, had booked the room and then signed the contract. And then, I guess, uh, some, some people at the college decided that they needed to have extra security just because they were afraid there was going to be a protest. Or I guess maybe they had complaints or something at that it was like too much that the, the people organizing it didn't have the money or something, so it was moved to Hamilton, apparently. So, and apparently they had a bigger audience there anyway, so. But it was a weird thing, you know, because it's just like, it's like a censorship on campus almost, which was. Well, the Mohawk College has nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. Like I tell you, we're called Ganyungi Haga. Whenever you see any of these corporate band councils, they're all called Mohawks. They're corporations. The Corporation of the Tyndanega Band Council, the corporation, they're all, okay, so band councils. In Tyndanega, where I come from, originally, uh, since they imposed this band council system in 1924, at gunpoint, shot the chief in the head, RCMP, boom, you're no longer the chief. Anyone else want to be chief? All right, and installed their band council system. Since then, 3% of the people have ever voted for this. Today, same thing. Historically, 3% of the people vote for these positions. They're not us. They don't represent us. They are the corporatocracy in Indian country. And they know it. And they know our law. And that some of them, like the ones at Six Nations, they started trying to get involved in land claims. And they were told right at Caledonia, you have nothing to do with land claims. You take care of the res. That's all. Right? The councillors at, at Melanchthon were trying to get the band councillors Counselors, counselors, trying to get them to do something, to let them do something here. And uh, so they put out something in the news. I went down to Six Nations. I went down to our war chief there, and I brought him everything, the newspaper article, the article that I wrote. I said, I went to Melanchthon Town Council. I told them they're all, you know, breaking the law. They had a picture of the Queen and King right there. I said, I'm His Majesty Faithfully, right there. There was a couple lawyers there. I said, you two both know what I'm talking about. This supersedes admiralty law. They did, right? I don't know why people are not talking in the legislature about jurisdiction on this issue. That's the only important thing, jurisdiction, right? What's your take on uh, Julian Plautino and the dispute with Caledonia, uh, but also how he got bumped up at uh, the uh, motherfucker showed up with KKK. Julian Fantino, you know, Again, I mean, all these characters in this fiction called Canada, the democracy. Julian Fantino, the whole police state that we live in, he's a part of it. Now he just fits right into the, 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 the pretend democracy thing. Come on. I mean, we're all on to the bad act that Canada is. We've had enough. I mean, we really have. I mean, the people of Egypt had enough. You've seen what they did. Wisconsin. Wisconsin, Jesus. right. The firefighters were protest. 20,000 people overtook the uh, city hall, right? Yeah. Yeah, amazing. For four days? Or are they still there? I hope so. Well, I mean, you can't go. You've seen how the Egyptians did. You don't go until he goes. We don't go until you go. <laughs> That's it. Power to the people. It's time. It's coming, you know. We're coming to the time of great peace on earth. This is the good news. You know, when the sky world comes back, the peace is coming back this time for good. You know, the last time the sky world come is when the, the Iroquois Confederacy, the Haudenosaunee, Haudenosaunee, our first United Nations was formed. And then for 3,000 years on all of Turtle Island, you know, all of Turtle Island, all of the different nations adhered to Guyana Recor, the law of the peace. From the Maya up to the Aleuts, right up from the Haida Gwaii, right across to the Mi'kmaq. Everybody knew we are the keepers of the law of peace in Onondaga. The, the, the Maya are the keepers of the law of time in, down in Mexico. We all knew we lived in peace for 3,000 years till Columbus brought, or till the Europeans brought the war back. And that's how war works. As soon as you engage in it, it just continues. And that's what we figured out when we came to the peace, because we were at a time of perpetual war. It was total war when Duganarita brought us to peace. We already figured this stuff out. 
And it all has to do with Canada, the word means community. So each community is run by the women. The Council of Women run the communities. I heard that Kanata, Canada, is an original native name. Yeah. The original name of the country. It means community. community yeah. they, you see, they show a picture on TV and CBC. Uh, some French guy showing up, and the guy's going, Can I? And he says, Canada. I, I think that means the village. It means community. And the communities are run by the Council of Women. This is a, a Council of the Great Peace. This is how it works. Each community is run by the Council of Women. Council of Women is set up in clans, so all the people of the community are all connected to the women through their clans, right? Your mother's a certain clan. So that's how you, you meet in clans, and you decide, like I showed you here, this is the issue that affects us all. It's become a one mind. Each clan does it, and then when the three clans of the Mohawk accept it, then it becomes law. And it's not no division here. It's all one mind stuff, right? Right. This is where we got to get to again. We will. It's not that hard, really. It's a matter of changing your priority thought from me to we, really. Oista is the greatest cause of every problem, I think. Greed, really, I mean, but I mean, really, it's the priority thought. First thing you think, me, me. Almost everyone's guilty of it. We're all guilty. We are all suffering sickness of Oista, all of us. So it's up to us all to heal ourselves. Stop it and start thinking we. Stop thinking, stop thinking about yourself and you and narcissism and selfishness and start thinking about other people the before yourself, world, the whole world, all of it. everywhere. Everything. That's the, everything. Words, when you, when, you, when you translate what we call the Thanksgiving address, it means words before all else. And the first thing we do is, if say we're gathered like this, we say, now we gather and we put our minds together as one to give great thanks to our mother of the earth. And now our minds are one, and we put our tobacco. You know what I mean, whatever. But we become of one mind by giving thanks to the earth, then to the waters, then to the plants, then to the food plants, then to the fish that clean the waters, and then to the winds, and the, the, and the clouds, and the thunderers, and the lightning, and, and uh, the stars, and, and the sun, and the moon, and we give thanks to everything in creation. And then that's how we're supposed to start our day, every day. So we, but we should get back to that, just Thanksgiving, you know? Give thanks every morning. Because once you do this Thanksgiving address, you don't have to even talk, think about it till tomorrow. You've thanked everything in creation. And you even say, and if I've forgotten to thank anything, it was never my intention. Anything I've left, I, I put it in now. You're included. You know, you say it right in your Thanksgiving address. So you don't forget to thank anything in creation, in the natural world, right? Because they all do exactly what creation asked them to do. You know, we have to give thanks for that. My goodness, thank that the trees still provide oxygen as they were asked to do. You know, because everything seems to be going a little bit out of whack now, you know, with this magnetism stuff. Wow. What do you think about that, Rob? The magnetism. Put it in for some shit. <laughs> what I think about is when I go to the bathroom, what's with the uh, contraband cigarettes you guys got posted yeah, all around that. there? I was like, what is this propaganda? What does it say? Yeah, there's a, there's a government the issue price in, in the washroom saying you could be fined or sent to jail for contraband cigarettes. It's got the bag smokes. Yeah, it's, it's got the bag the smokes. Devil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we were just talking about that too, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You should uh, see it as propaganda. Well, absolute propaganda. If you look at what cigarettes from the corporation it has. Chemicals, rat poison. It's got all types of, over 150 different chemicals. The biggest thing is they are ripping you off for 10 bucks a and pack. It's a slow kill. 